Hi there, Dead Idea Boy here, back with another video. And in today's video, we have got a race from Daily Race C featuring the dreaded Chicken of Death. Now, you can see I am going to be starting from last place on my Dead Last Del Boy account. Add me on PSN on that account if you don't already have me. And we will be trying to make up as many places as possible going from the back. Now you can see we've got some really quick drivers in front of us including P14 who's a world tour driver and yeah we're going to see what this car can do. I, I obviously made bold claims about it in the recent video that I did saying this car could tame or cheat the chicane of death so let's put it through its paces in a race and see exactly what it has about it. Now it's also going to be some absolutely wild scenes and shenanigans going on as we ghost through Brody there, thankfully the ghosting system working, somebody serving a hefty penalty so there's been some contact there, slowing down though to let the to, to let Brody back pass so that's good to see, that's the kind of thing you like to see, if you make a mistake and you take someone out, always a good idea just to slow down, even if you've got the penalty, let them get the position back. Now. It might feel like a double punishment, but it goes so far when it comes to making friends and allies on this game. Because if somebody treats you with that sort of respect, you don't usually forget it. And in future races, you know, rather than go for a big send, you might bump draft them instead and work together, all that kind of thing. I've seen it myself. I've made lots of friends in this game by being respectful and not doing things to upset others. That's that's the way I like to race the game. Anyway, approaching the chicane of death here for the first time in the race. How many deaths will we see? A little puff of smoke, but everybody seems to have miraculously survived it. So that's quite nice to see. But we've got a better run than the Porsche out of it. But there's a huge ball of smoke up ahead. And there's two cars in the wall now. That's been a big coming together there. And it's actually involving the leaders and there's a car slowing up on the left hand side and it's, well, it's an infamous driver who also goes by the name of GT Arc. Now, he's on the name Garda Lake Surf or something like that on this, but it's GT Arc. So you might have, well, you might have heard of him. I've certainly featured him in videos on in the past just because of his absolute ridiculous driving and we've had some arguments, discussions, all that kind of thing. He's taken me out of races and I just don't know what goes through his head at times but he's certainly been involved there but we're going to look at that in depth at the end of the race so stay tuned. So back to the action and we're still on the back of the Porsche here. We just couldn't get the run out of the final turn on lap one there. We did have a chance to make the pass but car in front decided to move over and give the Porsche a slipstream which gave basically him the run and we weren't able to make the move stick but we're up to P11 from P16 so that's progress and again heading towards the chicane of death there's always the chance there's always the chance that somebody could die and there's the yellow flags out and there's somebody in the wall with a penalty I think it's Nick Bear and that's not good they are or is it Nick Bear? I'm not sure, but they've decided to basically spin galore. Hit the wall, get the penalty. It's just an absolute double punishment. I don't know why those wall penalties exist. It's horrendous. An example of it would be you hit the wall, you crash, you get a 1.5 second penalty, and then you have to do about a six point turn trying to get back on the track, and you get about six seconds worth of penalties. All your trouble now. Here we go down into turn one. We've got James making the move on the outside. I let him basically go there, didn't want to fight it because I knew he was previously leading, so he was on the medium tyres, so he was going to be quicker anyway. So that's basically an example of how to give somebody the position, don't fight it, and then you don't lose time. Now, skipping forward in the lap here, I have to make some sort of an apology here to the Spaniard who I inadvertently made contact with going up the inside. I didn't even really think about or notice it at the time because just everything that was happening. And looking back now, I can see that I did actually 
almost cause him to slide out, but he managed to maintain, he's right behind me now, so hopefully there's no hard feelings there, and it's not confirmed myself as a dirty driver, certainly was not, so apologies there, um, if that's caused Spaniard to be anyway angry towards me, it really didn't, didn't mean that, but anyway, into the pits we go and out of the pits we come, so we're back now, on, well, out on the medium tyre now, which is going to be the quicker tyre, but we're still behind the Frenchman and the Porsche, I feel like it's basically been me staring at that Porsche rear end for a lot of the time as somebody else crashes out, and yeah, that was a big one, let's just say. But now as we approach the chicane of death for the sixth time of the race, now this was the only time I made any sort of a mistake, I think, well certainly up to this point anyway, because we just drifted slightly to the left and grazed the wall and got a 1.5 second penalty for our troubles. Now, the car handled the kerbs absolutely fine, I just didn't turn in enough, I just got my angles a little bit wrong, so yeah, that was on me that one, not the car, but here we go now, skipping forward to lap 9, we're still chasing down this portion, there's a big one there, there's somebody else in a GTR 13 unable to handle the kerbs and they're in the wall, we now got a really nice run on the Porsche coming up to the end of lap number 9, so this is now going to be our chance, can we finally get up to P6, which would be a nice little return considering we started P16, but just goes to show, as I was saying in my previous video, this car is really consistent, it's really nice through the chicane, and you can just pick up position after position just by being basically as consistent as you can be. Now we've got some company behind us now in the form of Bonneville who was up near the front to start the race so quick driver and he's got a lot of pace around this track so we're going to have to keep an eye on that radar as they have managed to hunt us down. So yeah the Frenchman's going to be my target but I've also got that sort of thing in the back of my mind where do you attack or do you defend and that is absolutely when I am at my worst now I could have potentially sent it up the inside there but there's a fair chance it would have involved either one or both of us leaving the track and that's not what I want to see so heading up into the break so we go defensive we're going to make Bonneville work it well work for the position they send the GTR 13 up the outside and they get the move done so absolutely fair play that was a tremendous move you've got to just sometimes tip your hat and say well done but coming through the chicane of death for the last time you can see they get so out of shape and kind of <laughs> accidentally block me from making the pass there but you can see they quickly well they quickly put on the hazard lights and apologize for it and you can see what's going to happen now, we're coming round the last corner to finish the race, we've got a P8 in the bag now, but Bonneville pulls over to let us get the P7, but I didn't want the position that way because, yeah, I mean, if anything, for that move round the outside, they deserved to hang on to the P7, and it was completely accidental when they almost lost it at the chicane, and, and we went into the back of them slightly, so yeah, didn't want the position that way, but thank you all the same. Now. Let's just check the replay here and find out what really happened at the front of this race with the infamous GTR. Now he become he just decides to slow down here and stick on his indicator light. I don't know what's happening. He's getting tapped from the rear now by the car behind uh, James, the British driver. So skipping forward, they're going to go through the chicane of death, and all are going to survive it there. So the, the leader getting a little bit out of shape and. There's a car going up the outside that's going to get involved in the mix. Now watch this. This is one of the most clinical, cynical takeouts I've ever seen. It was actually like a really impressive snooker shot where you punt one car perfectly into the other. You can see here from the leader's point of view, which was James at this point, he must have got the fright of his life as he went absolutely flying into the barrier there. And I can only imagine what was going through the mind of the French driver as they get absolutely smashed to pieces, ending up with a completely destroyed car, broken engine, just about all the wheels are gone as well, so yeah, I mean, he gets a five second penalty for his troubles and a broken engine, but that wasn't enough, he then tried to take James out at the very next corner, heading down into turn one, 
yeah, I mean, it's just idiotic. Why anybody would then want to spend another 20 odd minutes going round the track, wasting their own time, is a mystery to me. You can see here, absolutely brilliantly avoided from James, to be fair. I can only assume there was some real bad blood between those drivers and this was the upshot of it. But it affects everybody's race. It's just it's just ridiculous, to be honest with you. Now here we go through the chicane of death. You can see what happened between myself and Bonneville there. They just got a little bit out of shape. But this is the other side of Gran Turismo 7 when you're racing online. If you have respectful racing, respectful drivers, you can see here Bonneville knows we are clean because we obviously had the side by side as they went round the outside. They then decide, okay, I'll let them have the position, but we give them it straight back. So mutual respect there. And that's really what you want to see more of, not the kind of antics and absolute madness that your players like GT Arc get involved in. <laughs> because to be honest with you, it's pretty embarrassing for the game that this sort of thing is still happening. And we're not talking about kids that are driving here. We're talking about grown adults that are driving um, and if, certainly in the, the shape of GT Arc, he's, he's a grown adult and for him to take out his anger like this on a game, it's just, yeah, it's beyond stupid in my opinion, so no doubt he'll have some sort of explanation for it like he always does, but you know, I've heard it enough times, a leopard doesn't change its spots and in this case Arc will never change, we should all know that by now, so he can race clean and fast when he wants, but he just has these races where he just has the red mist and nothing else but taking others out matters. And you can see here in this replay footage here as we finish up the video, look at that. No regard for anybody else, quite prepared to ruin his own race just to take someone else out. So, But thanks very much for watching, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all on the next one. Goodbye.